Uh, so here you are again. You last we spoke, you said she's very unwell. Like it's not true. All the other stuff is not true. She's very unwell. She's dealing with something. We think she's going to be okay, but she's genuinely ha having a health issue. And then we get this news just for those who didn't see it, but I'm sure everybody's seen the video by now. Let me play an excerpt of um, Kate Middleton on Friday announcing her cancer diagnosis. In January, I underwent major abdominal surgery in London. And at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy and I'm now in the early stages of that treatment. This, of course, came as a huge shock, and William and I have been doing everything we can to process and manage this privately for the sake of our young family. But most importantly, it has taken us time to explain everything to George, Charlotte and Louis in a way that's appropriate for them and to reassure them that I'm going to be okay. As I've said to them, I am well, and getting stronger every day by focusing on the things that will help me heal in my mind, body, and spirits. Having William by my side is a great source of comfort and reassurance too, as is the love, support, and kindness that has been shown by so many of you. It means so much to us both. Mm. Mm. England's lucky to have her. Dan, what do you make of the announcement? Well, I think it's quite an extraordinary statement, very unusual for a member of the royal family to give an address like that on video. Usually such an announcement would be made on paper. But after the sort of frenzied speculation which had gone all around the world, I mean, Fox in the US just the night before had run a primetime documentary authored by TMZ, Where's Kate?, she knew she had to step up. It had to be a video. But as you say, hasn't stopped the conspiracy theorists. I feel, Megan, this is almost like Paul McCartney. You know, some people think Paul McCartney died in a car crash in the 1960s. And we what? don't have the real Paul McCartney today. I promise you, Google this. It's a major conspiracy theory. I promise you, in about 50 years' time, there'll be people who still don't believe that that's the real Kate. Look, mm -hmm. that was her. It was a genuine video. I promise you, there's no one at Kensington Palace with the technical know-how to right. do some sort we of We saw deep how they did with that photo on it. even drop a Photoshop a picture. Right. right, okay, so it's her. And they didn't yeah. release, there's so much to go over, but they didn't say what kind of a cancer it was. So she said that she had major abdominal surgery and that after, you know, whatever had been removed, it sounds like something was removed because she said, however, uh, the surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present, had been. So to me, that suggests she had something removed and then they always check the removed organs and so on to make sure nothing remains and something appears to have been cancerous that was taken out. And now she's in the early stages of preventative chemotherapy. Okay, here is some of the reaction to that, Dan. You and I are not doctors, but I just wanna get you to weigh in because this is CNN, uh, Anderson Cooper, who hosted Dr. Jer Jonathan Reiner. I will say, we looked up his background. It appears he's um, his expertise is in uh, let's see, certified in internal medicine, cardiovascular disease, and interventional cardiology. Okay, watch. Well, with all respect to the, you know, to the royal family, uh, that kind of, you know, press release doesn't make a lot of, of medical sense. When people undergo extensive surgery, they, they just don't go in for uh, typically anymore uh, for, quote, exploratory surgery. All of these surgery, all of these operations are preceded by extensive imaging like CAT scans and MRIs, a piece of the tissue removed, whatever the organ is, or uh, the organ removed, or uh, intestine, for instance, that goes directly to the pathology lab, often during the surgery. Uh, and sometimes whether something is cancer or not will dictate the extent of this, the actual operation. So it's very likely that uh, the surgical team knew or had a good sense of what this was going to be prior to surgery 
and that uh, was uh, confirmed at the time of uh, pathologic testing during the operation. So this is something that would have at least been suspected before and confirmed during the operation. Hmm. What do you make of that, Dan? Mm. Well, of course, if that is true, it means that Kensington Palace directly lied because they were very clear in their public announcements about Catherine's surgery, which, remember, was just around the time that King Charles's cancer diagnosis was announced, that she was not suffering from cancer. I'd say two things. Firstly, the royal family have a long history of playing down medical issues. So Prince Philip had loads of serious cancers in about the 15 years before his death. Not once did he make a public announcement. Likewise, mm-hmm. the late queen who died of blood cancer, but on her death certificate, it simply said she passed away from old age. So this is something that the royal family do. They don't like to raise lots of issues about their health. But when it came to Kate, clearly this was particularly sensitive given the timing. The royal family is always very conscious of how announcements, major announcements from them, affect the public confidence in the monarchy. Just imagine, Megan, if in the course of two hours it had been announced that both the king and the future queen were suffering from cancer. So I think it is quite possible that there was at least some sort of expectation that cancer would be found, but the decision was made not to announce it publicly. Perhaps they hoped never to have announced it publicly. However, when it became clear just how serious this was, but also just how much the world was not going to accept a lengthy absence from Catherine, the PR strategy changed. What I still think, though, and remember, I have been very, very strong. I've never joined the carnival of criticism of Catherine herself. But what I would say is that Kensington Palace managed this in a very amateur hour way. Why on earth did they want to release a photograph of Catherine looking healthy and happy, knowing full well that at some point they were going to have to reveal that she's suffering from cancer and about to have chemotherapy? That Mm. was an odd decision and it exacerbated the situation. But I think for those blaming the princess herself, that's really unfair. Her priority, rightly or wrongly, personally I say this is rightly, was her children. So the kids are now on holiday, Megan, until April the 17th. So William and Catherine have this idea that in the next three weeks, they'll be able to get them, especially Prince George, who's a sensitive little soul, the future king, get them to a place psychologically where they've accepted that mummy has cancer, we think she's going to be okay, so that when he's amongst his peers, he's 10 years old now, uh, he's sort of strong enough to deal with that. You've got to think as well, that's something William is so strong on because of his childhood when he was at school having to deal with loads of major stories about his parents, not only his mother's death, but the divorce as well. And he struggled with that. So as I say, he's always been clear, William in particular, they will put the children first. In this case, they did that. Personally, I think there's lots of people uh, who should feel quite ashamed with the pressure that they put on Catherine over that period. Okay, this this is so interesting to me. You're right. So the royal family doesn't normally come out with the cancer diagnoses, Prince Philip, the Queen, and so on. And I, I think you make a good point because in Catherine's case, it would have been extra shocking, yes, because we also had the King's diagnosis, but also she's only 42 years old. Yeah. And they needed to be extra careful around this announcement, even more so than the Queen and Prince Philip and, and now the King Charles, because she's got three little ones. I mean, any mother could understand letting your young children know that you've got a potentially fatal disease. I mean, I'm not saying in her case, but you know, cancer obviously kills millions of people, is a very sensitive discussion. And you'd want to handle that in exactly the right way Maybe they did delay telling the children, as they're claiming, until they could spend three weeks straight with them and the kids could see mom all day, seeming fine, acting normal. I could absolutely understand that. So to me, that does make sense. I will say, you know, if they're still 
misleading in the description of how it all went down, it just undermines the whole thing even more because people, when they sense they're being misled, will hold on like a dog with a bone. And in this case, prior to Kate's announcement, we were being misled. You know, it the, they, the people were right that they were not being given the full straight story. Mm -hmm. So now more than ever, they need to be extremely explicit and honest. They can say, this is where we're drawing the lines, but there can be absolutely no missteps like the ones that we've seen. And I think that's what Kate tried to do in the video. But I would point out, Megan, there are lots of bad actors involved who were trying to exacerbate the situation. So I've never said that Kensington Palace dealt with this perfectly. Clearly, they didn't. It became an international PR disaster. But let me just balance it up a little bit. We now know for a fact that there are bots and troll farms working on behalf of the Russians and the Chinese and potentially the Sussex squad as well, who were purposefully spreading lots of false narratives to try and make the Catherine story bigger than it actually was. Now, that succeeded. We also know that there were lots of folk on the hard left who were deliberately trying to damage the monarchy. The most significant of them, Owen Jones, who is a uh, radical left columnist here for the Guardian newspaper, has actually had to issue a groveling apology because he knows what he was doing was completely wrong. So yes, I agree, there were mistakes made. Some people felt they were badly misled, but don't underestimate how much the enemies of the royal family have been using this to specifically damage Catherine and William, especially when it comes to their relationship, their marriage. We had jokes from Stephen Colbert on uh, American primetime television as a result. And never forget the hatred and the bitterness that Harry and Meghan still have towards the royal family because they had their friends out briefing that this was a mistake that Meghan would never have made with the Photoshop. So all I'm saying is that mistakes were made, but I do think there has also been a really deliberate ploy to make this even worse for the mm -hmm. royal family than it had to be. Financial experts thought we were in the clear. They were anticipating around six rate cuts by the Fed this year, and then the inflation data came out higher than expected. This isn't going away anytime soon. How could it? The U.S. is 34 trillion bucks in the hole, and yet we just keep on printing money, which pushes the prices you pay every day even higher. So you can either bury your head in the sand or you can do something about it. One option to consider is to diversify a portion of your savings into gold with Birch Gold Group. Gold can be your hedge against inflation, and Birch Gold makes it easy to own. They will help you convert an existing IRA or 401k into a tax-sheltered IRA in gold, and you don't pay a penny out of pocket. Text MEGAN to 989898 and get your free info kit on gold. Then speak with a precious metal specialist about how you can choose to protect your savings from persistent inflation with gold. Text MEGAN, M-E-G-Y-N, to 989898 now. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.